This video is supported by Central Oregon Radio, Central Oregon's number one internet station. Oh, we're on? Oh my gosh. <laughs> Hello everyone and welcome to the Ranger Rob Country Living Channel and better known as the Country Living Podcast. And uh, just to let you all know, you can find uh, this audio version. <coughs> um, I got a cold, so deal with it, Rob. Anyway, um, you can find us on uh, Spotify, iHeartRadio, uh, Spreaker, several other platforms. And so if you listen to the podcast on a regular basis, just type in Ranger Rob Country Living Podcast, and uh, it should come right on up. And you can listen to us anytime. This is episode 55, so we're getting up there. And I uh, also want to let you know that the show is also syndicated on Central Oregon Radio. So, uh, yeah, you can check us out there. I think it plays every day at 9 o'clock in the morning, something like that. So, uh, yeah, check them out there, too. So, with that in mind, I need to introduce my other host on top of the screen off to my right. Could be your left. Um, John and Debbie Stom Sternberg. I don't know why I say Stomberg. It's Sternberg. <laughs> they got the longest title. Um uh, Hobby Pig Homestead, and then, of course, we got Amy from Dragonfly Farms with a short little title, easy to remember. <laughs> and uh, before we get going, uh, I want to uh, catch off guard. Uh, you had little Zoe over at your house today, and I sure you did. guys made some really cute stuff. So can you sh show us what you made? Show, yeah. show and tell, show and tell. I know I caught you off guard. Very nice. Cute. So uh, you Zoe better watch out. Zoe made the red one. If I can get it in the damn picture. <laughs> Zoe made the red one. She did an excellent job. Yep. Okay. That was awesome. So uh, you better look out, Amy. You're going to lose your kid. I know. She made your collage. Can you... What's Didn't that? make a collage today, too? Oh, do you have your collage to show them, Debbie? Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and by the way, you got really nice hats on. Very nice. Bring it over yeah, more. Right. Yeah, you got it. Very, very. She polished. made this like in five seconds flat. <laughs> I seen her tearing the little papers up, and next thing she goes, "Here you are." <laughs> <laughs> wow. We we'll have to have Zoe on again. Uh, oh, I had so much fun with guess... her today. Thank you, Aim. Yeah. So. uh <clears throat> Today's subject is about dirty jobs that we've had to do on our homestead or farms. Uh, Title-wise, we went with farm only because the words were smaller. <laughs> Fit on the thumbnail better. But uh, anyway, guys, so uh, I think I'm, I'll, I'll kind of bring one of mine up, and then we'll just kind of chug along here. So if you're squeamish at all, uh, we'll recommend that this show might catch your squeamish side. But... Um, uh, all of us have had, and I'm probably going to go for my worst, most recent um, kind of squirmish, kind of dirty job that came up. But it was fun and adorable at the same time. And uh, John's cleaning the house and sweeping while we're doing this show. So. It's called multitasking. No, that's that good. Decided he was hungry. <laughs> so anyway, so, uh, what, um, <laughs> so I'm going to start off with one of the most grossest kind of fun but nice cutest thing we did and john was involved in this too uh is when we delivered piglets oh yeah uh, <laughs> it was adorable but at the same time and i have to kind of tell you a, a little uh, story about is it your brother michael yeah it's my brother yeah so there was all of us were out there at night time delivering piglets and so John got really brave and it was in an A-frame. And, you know, this is the mighty giant Maggie. And so he's in the very back. There's nowhere to go if Maggie gets mad. But uh, Maggie was a sweetheart. But she's a giant pig. And John just got brave and got right in the back and started being Mr. Doctor. Uh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> pig catcher. <laughs> yeah. So, so the way we delivered piglets was we had a whole bunch of towels. A big pile of towels and each one that came uh john would catch the, the little one kind of get them uh breathing a little bit and kind of clean up a little bit then he'd hand them across maggie and give them to me and i'd give them the final shine and make sure that they're responsive and the whole thing and then michael 
was kind of in between that. So Michael has never seen piglets. In his, I, I don't want to see he's a city slicker because he, he isn't, but he was definitely um, more squeamish on, on this. And this. so it was kind of funny as some piglets came out right out and they were kind of easy to clean up and John passed them over and then we got kind of Michael in, in between us. So then one came out was pretty messed up, but it was a great, it lived everything, but it was a messy piglet. And uh, so we handed it off to Michael and Michael's like, ew. <laughs> He's like, just, I thought he was going to throw up or something. He's like, oh, it's to me, you know. And so I always, so it was uh, one of those kind of icky jobs, but at the same time, it was adorable at the same time. But uh, so, yeah. And, uh, uh, you know, and you definitely have different odors that come out, like when they're still kind of wet and all that, uh, it's a little bit like, uh, okay. <laughs> and, so, and then they dry out in like 10 minutes and then they're adorable. But, uh, Anyway, that was probably the funniest, but probably the could be known as kind of a dirty job in a way, but it was a fun, dirty job. So I, I've got other ones here, but I'm going to wait until the rest Actually, of my I neighbor. thought it was really cool. <laughs> it, it was cool. No doubt. I mean, Hi, Jack. I, <laughs> What's that? I. It was kind of okay. Nowhere to go. Got to do it. <laughs> <laughs> Besides, Maggie got mad at you. You'd be dead. <laughs> <laughs> I was waiting for it. That's why I kept patting her saying, doing a good job. Doing good, a good, piggy. Job. good piggy. You know what you think about it? That's like a three hundred pound pig that is like but she didn't she I I got the nice side, so I got the pet her and keep her kind of calm and help her through her labors and stuff. And she was adorable. But uh but yeah, that was quite the experience. But it it's it's not for the faint of heart either. So and uh, yeah, so uh, I'm going to move right on to, I'll just go across the screen here to John and Debbie. And uh, so uh, lately, or well, it doesn't even have to be lately and stuff, but uh, what are some of the dirty jobs and, and that you've got had to do lately on the, on the homestead? Clean out the pig poop and the rabbit poop. <laughs> and Amy, oh. you know that plastic stuff I gave you guys for the rabbit? Yeah. Yeah, it's not working right. It won't go through? It will not go through. Hmm. So Sorry. I had to go I and worried cut, about that. I had to go and cut the corner out that he chose. But yeah, trying to clean that up. Oh my gosh. It was <laughs> yeah. not fun. Bummer. So uh, I'm gonna answer a question for J uh, Jack really quick. He was asking about the diesel fuel shortages up here. Have you guys seen anything in shortages on diesel around our area? I don't know if that's why Terrebonne, and the town pump is always down. A lot of their pumps are down. I don't know if it's because of the diesel or they just are out of gas. I don't in think Redmond? Town, yeah. I don't think they have diesel there. What, in Redmond? At the town pump? Yeah. Oh, they do. I've never seen, yeah. Oh, maybe they do. Um. But yeah, I have to say, not yet. <laughs> yeah, I'm not sure if it's just they don't have all the gas or just if it's the diesel. But about every other day, they're closed down. Yeah. I'll be darned. Well, some of us don't get to go to town as much as uh, John and Debbie and camping. There he goes, all the fun again. stuff they get to do. So someday when I get permission to leave the property, I'll go look and see if they're selling diesel. <laughs> no, thanks. no problem, uh, Jack. Um, so, uh, yeah, so I got a feeling that this conversation will involve poop a lot. Um, and, and Pigs I have, have to tell a you, lot of poop. I have to tell you the funny thing in our family is, you know, I have the Ranger Rob poopy bags. And so my, my daughter made a comment the other day and she goes, you know, mom and dad, uh, when you guys move on, I'm just going to inherit nothing but poop stuff. And, <laughs> it's your though. I mean, it's like literally all out get, of love. <laughs> probably pick, pick up my Ranger Rob poopy bag uh, business and probably uh, be stuck with some of the poopy jobs to do here uh, on the farm. Where, you know, but I, I'm not planning on doing that anytime soon. And hopefully, maybe I'll sell all the Ranger Rob stuff in the next year or two. But <laughs> we'll see. Um, not sure if I'm gonna. I might. <laughs> I don't know, but. Um, 
Of course, we had our poopy bags made in another country, and uh, I don't know if I want to do that again. So, but I can't get them built any place cheaper. So, um, Americans just they want they want us to build thing in the United build stuff in the United States, but they don't want to pay for it. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah. So we'll have to see how that goes. But it'll be a while because we bought a, a large inventory from the, uh, to get the prices down so we could be uh, competitive. So fun stuff, but it still deals with poop. So, by the way, we've learned so many things you can do with a poopy bag, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> Crack some of them I can't even take. <laughs> Collect shells. <laughs> yeah, we picked up, uh, in, not to mention make, picking up messes when we were delivering piglets, but... Uh, uh, Sherry actually had a whole bag of them full of eggs, and uh, a rooster attacked her, and so she beat off the rooster with the bag, which in turn, uh, the bag did not protect the... Uh, um, Got trolls. It's like, yeah. Um, we'll take care of that what problem. What is that? It's gone now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's just that easy. Um, uh, so I got off track there, but yeah, she beat off the chicken with the uh, with the eggs uh, in the bag, and uh, the eggs didn't make out too well. Uh, Elijah's here. Uh, what was Hi. that? Hi there, y'all. I'll be watching a few something, a few more weeks at least, but then I may have to take a break from YouTube until New Year's. Why? Holidays. <laughs> <laughs> you, well, you can take a break from YouTube break except on Thursdays at six o'clock. <laughs> But yeah, so uh, I'm still making sure that we get that. I, oh, I wonder where that kind of stuff just comes out of the blue when you get posts like that. Yeah. Control, but this is like, how do they find it? Maybe they just search down live shows. I don't know. So anyway. Uh, I've got uh, my dirtiest job. <laughs> what's that? Well, a month after we moved here, we broke a main line out there by the shop. And I had to dig a hole five feet by five feet by five feet in the mud until I had to unbury the pipe so that the workers could come out and fix the pipe. They weren't going to dig it out. They said it would be almost three months for them to come out and do it. It was right after we bought the place. And I... For a solid week, I was nothing but covered in dirt, <laughs> mud. It was about this time. It was about this time of year. Oh, yeah. So it's getting yeah, cold, it cold. Cold, wet, and muddy is not fun around here. No. So that that was my dirtiest job around here. <laughs> what, how about you, Amy? Anything jump out at you? Yeah. Besides the usual, you know, mucking stalls and cleaning chicken coops. Um, He's he's better now, pretty much healed. But when I first got one of my baby goats, he had an umbilical abscess. So an abscess where the umbilical cord would have been attached when he was born. Yeah. And if anybody doesn't know, and you did warn everybody that this was going to be gross and is not a good squeamish person show tonight. <laughs> abscesses are full of pus. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and it was. And it was gross. And like yeah yeah it yeah. wasn't for that the fact that those goats are super adorable <laughs> it makes up for it somewhat yeah yeah she's all right how's he doing now like, how, yeah how's he's he doing better. yeah is, is it going yeah, down he, yeah there for a while honestly it seemed like every time i turned around that particular goat was trying to die on me i was like what is your deal because he had the umbilical abscess, and then he had a terrible bout of um, diarrhea. So he went through the whole list of, which in itself is gross. So we went through the whole list of figuring out what the diarrhea was caused from. He ended up, I brought him in the house and gave him a bath. <clears throat> so I'm picking pieces of poop out of his tail, falling into the bathtub. Got him all cleaned up. Because we thought, you know, with a fresh slate, all this medicine that we gave him, you need to know if the diarrhea continues, right? So he needs to have a clean bottom so you can see if he still has the diarrhea. And so he got a bath inside and then you know, it's cold. He can't go back outside cold, wet, 
So then he got blow dried. He had a whole salon day. He hated every minute of it. Not <laughs> sure. <laughs> yeah, it's like, I don't know. It seems like if, I guess the qualifications to be a homesteader requires you to be dealing with poop constantly. Yeah. But the thing is, is like, uh, if you're into permaculture and all that stuff, it's actually a blessing in disguise. <laughs> I don't know. If, uh, not, the kind of poop that you get from your your rabbits and your lambs and your uh, your pigs and stuff like that is what I call constructive poop that you yeah. can use in gardening into uh, permaculture, uh, in improving the quality of your soil and your fields, all that kind of stuff. Unlike what our dogs or cats, we can't really use that stuff. And, and of course, human stuff. But um, if you can get that right mindset of like, I just look at this. When I when we're cleaning the stuff and we're creating a, a pile or something like that, we're just looking at is future stuff for the gardens and stuff. So, uh, and us we have two and a half acres that we're trying to trying to bring to life. So it's like bring on the poop. <laughs> it's like yeah. We can use it. What I don't have is like you guys is the miracle poop, which comes from rabbits. That's the great one. Because uh, what's so nice about that stuff is it it's uh, easy to work with, too easy to clean. And three, you can use it right away. I mean, right yeah. off the bat. Um, so uh, if you like watch uh, Living Traditions, the, the, she'll use them on her tomatoes and stuff like that. And uh, they just pour all their uh, stuff right into a garbage can, let it dry. And then by the time they're ready to plant, they got all this dried rabbit stuff. And then they just bag it up and pour little handfuls in each hole when they're planting their, their tomatoes and stuff. And so... Uh, yeah, that's pretty magical stuff. <laughs> so well, I'll uh, share mine when I start getting it. Yeah, sure. <laughs> well, you should be getting it. You got a rabbit already. Well, I kind of had a problem with my rabbit. He doesn't poop. <laughs> well, he didn't eat, and he wasn't drinking, and he wasn't pooping. Oh, well, but he's see. munching the grass like crazy. He, he's eat, he just now started eating the hay and started going to the bathroom, but he's not eating his food at all. Wait, yeah, that's because you haven't given him any uh, girlfriends. I'm I'm waiting for my girlfriend. Yeah. So so I'm the waiting big for my girlfriend to give me a girlfriend. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what was this? Cold manure. Yep, cold manure. Uh, yeah. I just say it's stuff you can use right away. <laughs> yeah. And congratulations on your two dolings. That's awesome. So what is what's a doling? Two girls? Girl babies, yeah. Yeah. Huh. All righty. So I guess our big news over here was we just got um the new piglet. Did I get that this week? Yeah. So yeah, we we took a break last week. So uh yeah, we're up to uh uh, a third breeder female. She would be called a guilt because she's never had babies before. My other two uh, girls are sows because they had piglets this year. So, uh, yeah, um, the interesting thing, and I actually had to record it because it's just too much to take in, but I had Steve Sparks over here, and I had just asked him on, on film, please explain to me what makes this breeder unique. And so... Apparently, uh, Idaho pasture pigs, you know, they started out in Idaho and then it was sold off to another comp, uh, big comp farm. They bought them out and then most of the Idaho pasture pigs kind of started going east towards the uh, uh, east coast. And so uh, the west coast got obviously Idaho pasture pigs, but our... Um, <clears throat> Heritage is a little bit kind of like smaller than, say, everything back east. So what was really cool is Steve bought this pig that was pregnant already from another pig that was over in the east coast. So totally a new line of pig uh, pigs coming in for um, our generation over here, which is going to really improve uh, the, <coughs> oh, what do you call it, the generation of of bringing back some old line of Idaho pasture pigs into this new line that we've already had. So uh, anyway, so it should uh, 
for those that are breeders, should a lot of us should be kind of excited to kind of have more of that those kind of pigs over here. That makes sure that all of our herds are um, stay well within the uh, um, the definitions of what Idaho pasture pig is meant to be. So anyway, it was kind of exciting. And uh, <clears throat> so he's cute, but he's a tricolor. So he's not like that pretty brown and black. And he's not like that pretty black and white. And, well, and he's not like that ginger. He's all of it. <laughs> I was everything. noticing in the pictures. I said, look at all those colors. Oh, he's got every, every color, every single one. And uh, it's interesting when he's in, when he's in the sunshine, you can see little brown uh, spots on him that you can't normally see, like in the shade. Wow! So he's he's going to make some interesting babies. Yeah. Well, she she is. So uh, yeah, we're excited, but we can't breed her till like June. So it'll be a while. So that was our excitement. So unfortunately, right now with the rain and then we get this sleet and snow. Trying to stay with the dirty jobs theme here a little bit is everything's wet and muddy. Um, yeah. And I don't like my pigs wallowing in mud all the time. I don't want my my paddocks to be that way. So uh, uh, if it keeps up like this and it's going to stay muddy like that, it's not that terrible mud. It's just a real light stuff. But if it stays that way, I'm going to be moving my paddocks more because uh, I just I don't know. I just even though I know the the pigs, I don't want my whole paddock to be a mud pit. Throw so, throw down some hay. Oh, so definitely do that. Up really good. Yeah, we uh, we constantly do that. But this last couple of days, it was pretty wet. <laughs> so, and of course, our ground doesn't it doesn't seep into the ground like it should. So it stays on top to uh, longer than normal in it. Um, but yeah, so but it's really nice to see the rain come, and it, yeah. it takes it takes longer for our soils for that the waters start going down into the depth. So, uh, yeah. So my, my areas are a little shocked because we really haven't had a real rain for five months. If you think about it. So, so yeah. I imagine our, our ground cover around here is going to be in shock. So, uh, another dirty job is, is, uh, I switched from wearing tennis shoes out there to mucklucks. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> really. Me too. Cool. Me too. Yeah. So, and overalls. So uh, yeah. now you got you know, the big news with you guys is uh, is Debbie's getting into the rabbit world, and so uh, you just got a a, a buck, a Rex brown yep. a brown colored one, and you, now you're in search of a some a doe. female some does, mm -hmm. um, and you're trying to stay with the Rexes, right? Yes. Yeah. So so what are some of the the dirty jobs you've uh, just learned about rabbits? Um, well, I put the plastic, this plastic netting over the wire to protect. Oh, I remember seeing coffee that. And to protect coffee's feet. Well, the poop doesn't go through it, even though there's holes. So cleaning that up was <clears throat> awful. It just smeared because it was wet from the urine and the hay. Yeah. So, yeah, so that was awful. So since he picked a corner, I went in there and cut that corner out. So I'll see if it actually goes through or not. Did, did you just see the price of uh, diesel over in Elijah's area? That is crazy. Seven thirty-five a gallon. A gallon. Wow. Oh my gosh. Like, it was uh, five sixty-four here in Redmond when I went past it. Yeah, That's I, crazy. Uh, I just I had to fill up. I actually fill up the truck there because I have That's twenty ridiculous. cents off from Safeway. So. Uh, I actually got to pay five twenty nine, I think, for diesel. Um, do you guys uh, worm your rabbits? We don't deworm our rabbits. No, we don't. Mine is two years old, and I don't think it was dewormed either. In fact, I met the breeder. I got it from somebody in Redmond, and she told me who she got it from, and it's a breeder right here on the ranch. Hmm. 
By the way, did you ever get uh, your little, uh, the little dinky uh, worm jet? Because I gotta, oh, yeah. I gotta buy some more of that stuff. Dinky and yeah. Stan both. I have some if you want it. I uh, see. What was I thinking? Um, well, they don't give you a choice. You have to buy a big bag of it. I know. It, it, you only give them like the little cup that comes with it. Yep. So you're more than welcome to it if you like it. Actually, I think I'm okay, but I was thinking I might have. Um, Missed Forgot one of my pigs, but I think I'm good. I think I'm good, but um, but yeah. So, if you so need some, gonna, give us a call. Yeah, sounds good. Because I, gotta... I oh, I wanted to do the new one I just got. I'm not, I haven't confirmed with um, Steve Sparks or whether my new little one got wormed or not. So once I confirm that, I'll figure out if, uh, if I need to borrow any. But all my it was kind of nice when you have ten piglets. A bag is almost perfect for them uh, when you buy that stuff. But uh, when you only have one, it's like <laughs> you just need a cup. You know? <laughs> yeah, and you might, you're going to have to take them out of there to feed them it. Otherwise, the rest Another are going to get it. But yeah, I don't. Yeah, I don't think if they're anything like dogs and cats. I'm not so sure about cats, but dogs. If you're not sure if they've been dewormed, they say to go ahead and do it again. Yeah, I mean. Uh, uh, I would be if you're well, like with pigs. If if mine are going to stay in the same paddock too long, I probably would worm them again. Um, if I was moving them more, I wouldn't worry about it so much. But I uh, haven't got my my pigs moved as much as I wanted to this year. But uh, we're starting to move them now. We uh, increased one one of them. I got some new fencing, so um, so yeah, we're going. But anyway, I. I no. I'll probably talking be doing about, it again in the spring, maybe. Talking about moving and, you know, the 21-day cycle that I think um, Caleb was talking Caleb, about. Caleb, yeah. Do you have to do that in the wintertime, too? Because wouldn't the cold um, pretty much kill any pesticides on the ground? Yeah, but Since my worry is, my, like, I, I'm getting worried about my two sows because they got two 100-foot uh, fencing and they've got a nice spot but since it's gotten wet and mucky and they have their favorite area to go to the bathroom in uh, with all this moisture coming in and stuff uh, and the water is not draining as fast as I'd like it to um, no, it just I've got stuff on the surface and I kind of don't like that so this weekend we're cutting off that side of the field of their fencing and elongating in, in a different direction uh, so I just don't want my pigs you know, in that muck and walking around in there uh, to me, this seems like a little cesspool of problems. So, yeah. um, so I would say, for me, I've actually been more interested in moving them now than I was in the summer because the summer we had hot weather, things were drying out, the ground was cooking. Yeah, but that's when the pesticides start, from what Caleb was saying. That's why you have to move them in the summertime. Yeah, but I'm wondering but if in the winter time, since it's cold, freezing, snowing raining if it kills them off then i know the sun kills them off yeah that's why you need it to rest but what what about the winter time yeah that's a good question we'll have to bring out uh, bring those i'm i'm sure by the time we get a couple more weeks in we're all going to have some new questions for either steve or caleb and uh um let's see i'm trying to catch these notes here um Elijah, if you keep them on the wire and they have little chance of ever getting worms because they have no ground contact, uh, that's what we do. Oh, that's, that's, that's with the rabbits. Yeah, for the rabbits. Agreed. Um, and Leslie, that sounds, to me, that sounds more like it was maggots rather than um, some sort of intestinal worm that they had. Yeah. Uh, that, that that happens, you know, um, flies. Hey, Morgan. Or weather. There's uh, Morgan. Kershaw Farms. Maybe he yeah. knows. So, uh, interesting uh, thing about uh, Morgan is he's thinking about pigs. And it's like, I've been dying to kind of send him a note and say, you might want to think about the Idaho pasture pigs. Uh, if he's like, I mean, I, he seems like the kind of nature. Oh, we're frozen. Um, but uh, you know, Idaho pasture pigs, cooney coonies, stuff like that. But of course, we you know, uh, I we all like the Idaho pasture pigs. But 
I'm hoping that maybe he'll ask us more questions about Idaho pasture pigs before he makes his decision because uh, uh, we'll get him in touch with all the people that are really uh, on the board of directors or the breeders association and stuff like that. But, uh, um, uh, but yeah, I think it just seems to me Morgan would really love Idaho pasture pigs because they're, you know, they're friendly, controllable, so much, I mean, uh, a little safer, I think his wife would feel a lot safer around him too and stuff. So we're hope I'm hoping that <laughs> he might throw a note our way and say, what do you know about Do-y Idaho pasture pigs? There you go. You got an answer to something. Oh, there he goes. Um, yeah, if you can find some IPP uh, easily, I would go for it. But uh, for but for a year, uh, I'm going to shoot for available feeders, uh, which you can get with the IPPs too. Um you should have a lot of them over. I, I, my impression that there's more IPPs over in his area and, and the East Coast than there is here on the West Coast. Yeah. Um, but yeah, yeah I'll, I'll, I'll make I'll, a trip up there to get one. You want to drive to Vermont? Oh. <laughs> it's like I, I got some breeders that can, uh, or uh, some feeders that you can have, but all I have is females. But uh, you know, I'll, I'll put them in the back of uh, John's truck. We'll send them over, Morgan. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> So actually, his show today kind of motivated me a little bit. He uh, did a show today on um, a video uh, about difficult questions people asked him. <laughs> and, I, and I, for some reason, I was just thinking we had to talk about dirty jobs that we have on the job here. In fact, I I was going to call um, uh, Morgan to see if he wanted to be on the show and talk about some of the surprise uh, dirty jobs that you know he's had on the farm like uh, i don't know when he came on but you know so some of us have some early stories of what projects start one way and they go another and turns out to be a muck <laughs> uh, yeah. so yeah so if you got any good in fact i'll give you i'll send you a link uh morgan if you want to come on and tell us any of your good dirty jobs on the farm but uh i guess the reality is we want to tell everybody is it seems like the uh, the theme always turns out to be poop. <laughs> yeah, lots of it. But, well, but pigs poop's a have good a thing. lot of it. <laughs> yeah, and, and poop is a good thing if you use it right. But there's other poop that's not so good. But anyway, uh, and uh, and you know, never forget there's Ranger Rob poopy bags. <laughs> now, I want to know. I don't how know. Many, how many piles of pig poop can fit in one Ranger Rob poopy bag? Oh, <laughs> more than most people, uh, most of them out there. So, yeah, uh, yeah, we, uh, yeah, we can, we can pick up after horses with our bags. <laughs> wow, that's <laughs> impressive. Because uh, when you look at ours, ours kind of explode a little bit. They come out more, so you can take quite the load. <laughs> so, nice. <laughs> I can't, nice. I can't believe that. My whole life has been poop. That's all there is to it. Like I said, my daughter says I'm going to inherit all this, but uh, um, but yeah, yeah, hey, uh, Morgan, if you ever want to come on and you want to talk about disgusting things on our job on our farms, we'd love to have you on there. I'm sure he's got some great stories, but he was talking about some difficult questions. Uh, um, so I'm I'm advertising his video today, but if you guys get a chance to see it, it was kind of funny because there's a couple questions in here. He's kind of like uh uh, and so here's when I I'm going to throw it Amy that was on his video. Is okay. If you're if things let's say we have a fire going through here, and you're only able to take one animal out, oh, which crap. one would you choose? Which one would you choose? One animal, only one. The dog. I take and Debbie. That was so <laughs> what the hell? <laughs> <laughs> so that was similar to his answer. Uh, he goes. You know, he loves his uh, all of his animals, but he's like, which one would I take? So he ended up uh, said, probably going to be Toby Dog. And so, yeah, yeah. I, I had a feeling that was going to be his answer, but he did not want to answer that one. And I, I know how you feel about that. We've talked about it. it. Go ahead. It, it's a terrible thing to ever consider, you know. It's, it's a worse nightmare. And fire in general, wildfire, having to evacuate. Where we lived before, we were evacuated for 10 days from a wildfire. And we didn't lose our house, which was fantastic, because shortly after, we sold it and moved here. And we knew that that was going to be coming. 
but um yeah it's a it's a very scary thing and just makes me unsettled to even think about uh, morgan i just want to remind you uh, <laughs> from my note from elijah is uh um he's over in pennsylvania so he's not he's only a state a state next to is aren't they next to each other anyway but i don't think uh i don't think john uh, morgan has a was that sheep oh ducks ducks yeah. well yeah uh yeah <laughs> morgan <laughs> morgan's definitely a duck guy uh, see, Jack says I should our bag shoot for the mother load. <laughs> <laughs> I, I got to do that for a new commercial. Ranger Rob poopy bags for the mother load. <laughs> okay, so uh, let's see. Yeah, so we're, we're up to date. So it was really good to see Morgan. Um, I'm trying to think some of the other questions he got on this show, but there was a couple that he was really hesitant to answer because people ask you the craziest things, but. Uh, um, but, uh, yeah. Uh, oh, he was asking what was this? Well, here you go. This will work for our show too. What is one of the things that, um, was the most, this guy that asked him the question was obsessed with smells. He says, what's one of the worst smells you've had on the homestead? Oh. Anybody? What's yours, Debbie? Guy, it, it, it would have to have been the, uh, uh compost pile that was getting really stinky yeah <laughs> well, it was all pig poop <laughs> but you had it right there by the by the greenhouse and oh no and the garden so i i kind of avoided that area <laughs> <laughs> yeah how about it jack's septic tanks which we That's all have and I, I had to have I mine repaired last year. I don't my septic tank up to smell it. Yeah. Yeah. I, I don't even... <laughs> yeah, we had to open ours up last year. Our alarm, our alarm, our pump out to the drain field stopped working because it's tied into our alarm system kind of thing that oh. turns it on and off. So I had to have all that replaced <laughs> and I had to run a new wire to the pump that goes inside the tank and stuff so they had that lid open for quite a while oh. <laughs> it's like yeah so that I was fun they pulled out terry's pump uh, was probably the worst smell <laughs> when they tore out his That's tank right. and everything yeah it was oh, all man, rusted that, and yeah you're right two weeks of smelling it <laughs> I think one of the worst things we had is uh uh we lost a chicken not too long ago and one disappeared and the other one was dead so I, I begged them. I thought I did a good job of wrapping it and stuff like that. But uh, but it was in the garbage can for over a week. Anyway, apparently I didn't wrap it as good as I thought I did. And boy, that that was that would tip you over. <laughs> yeah, good, for sure. Good thing ours came the next day, huh? Because yeah. I didn't put it in a bag or anything. I just threw it in the garbage. <laughs> yeah. Or that so, deer. Yeah. We had a probably... deer die in the backyard when we first moved here. It went to jump over the bob wire fence and got his leg caught. And broke yeah. it. And he died back there. Yeah, that bob wire was out as soon as possible. Yeah. But yeah, that deer stunk. I bet. I, I won't follow up of just how nasty that must have been to get that out of there. Yeah, it was <laughs> disgusting. <Yeah. laughs> Welcome to homesteading. So, I, yeah. what are, um, let's see. One of the things I wanted to make sure I, um, I brought up, I even though it's not con exactly all about dirty jobs, but uh, I'll start with John and Debbie. So between now with the winter, I, I don't know if I can say, at least I can't really say as well, the things have slowed down or not. But so uh, what's your some of your future goals to go into spring and summer with that you're working on? We have a barn coming tomorrow. Yeah. We got a barn coming tomorrow. Such it was yeah. coming today. It was supposed to, but I well, guess they're slowed down a little. John said it was supposed to come today. They said today or Friday, mm. which is tomorrow. So yeah. it's supposed to be coming tomorrow then, um, unless the little bit of snow that we did got scared them because they're coming from Hermiston. Yeah. Oh. So they are coming over the small mountain. Gotcha. But that is going to be the new pig, pig paddock 
where the paddock will be outside, but the actual pig sleeping area will be inside the barn. Very nice. That's cool. I'm excited for you. Going out on each side. I'm trying. I'm saving my allowance so I could I could actually afford like a whole bunch of pallets and make a little barn out of that. <laughs> yeah. We got a neighbor that no. <laughs> <laughs> So, <laughs> so apparently your biggest projects in the summer, uh, spring and summer, will be uh, modifying your herd and, and and taking your your pigs to a, a, the next level after the butcher times, like we are. Like us, we're we're thinking do, about it. Doing what? Taking well, our pigs uh, to the next level. <laughs> oh yes, I'm looking for a boar. Gotcha, and. Uh, I know, like us, it's like we're kind of like, all right, we got the new USDA stuff going on where we have our meat. We'll be able to sell it individually packed. That's our big thing. But investing money in, in uh, freezers. So I bought two new freezers. And by the way, for those that go uh, have a Buy Mart, we, we're able to get seven cubic foot freezers for uh, $1.99. So uh, oh. just don't buy any more in Central Oregon because they got to buy two more. <laughs> So I'll be all ready for the spring when all this, because I I have six pigs that I'm doing USDA right now. Unless is that somebody the buys. chest freezers you're talking about? What's that? Is that the chest freezers you're talking yep, about? The chest, yeah, chest freezers. And I'd much rather have chest freezers. I trust them a little more uh, because even when they get shut off, the, the coldness stays in there longer. And... Uh, because we, I've never really seen us have really bad power outages or anything, but nah, I would trust it for about three to four hours and then it's back on. Yeah, but and it's uh, in case. I mean, you never know what year. You know, they say we're supposed to get a nasty winter, so we'll see. Yeah. But, uh, I got my generator. I'm ready. Yep, me too. <laughs> I'll keep my piggy clothes. <laughs> so, uh, so other than pigs, what other spring and summer uh, goals or? New projects are you trying to take on for next season? Hmm. Well, I'm doing the bunny thing. And I'm thinking about babies. doing the water line out to the pig paddock. Definitely. Or out yeah. to the barn. Yeah, this hauling water in the cold is, is for the birds. <laughs> yeah. I've actually we got a new wagon system. and stuff, but still, when it gets snowing and stuff, we can't use that wagon. It, it's just way too much. Yep. So, yeah, I got a new system I'm kind of building for uh, freezing water sit situation. So I, I, I won't announce it yet until I've proven this, this, that it works. <laughs> but, uh, uh, but, yeah, that's the only thing I got going on is that I think if we do anything next year that's different is I'll probably downsize a little bit of our output on gardening. But at the same time, if I ever got another animal in here, it would be Chucker. Yeah. And uh, I'd like to get that. Uh, and they wouldn't be actually for, they'd just be for fun. Because yeah. Chucker are just the cutest things in the world to watch. And they're, I mean, we could sit out there for an hour, hours and just watch Chucker. They're so entertaining. And, uh, Aren't they, they destructive, though? No. They're a colony bird, though. It's like watching it's like watching a clown but 20 clowns at the same time doing the same thing because they copy each other so if one jumps up on something then the next one will do it the next uh, one maybe come I down did, maybe know, i didn't understand it was a bird it's, it's a bird, a bird. <laughs> oh, <laughs> no, they're, okay. they're a partridge actually um but anyway very we used to raise them before and we just always loved the the, the noise that they make it, it have a unique sound and all that but um, that would be one of those just totally ho hobby for you know no money making. They are incredibly they, they are actually a white meat, believe it or not. But um, but yeah, so that would be one thing. I got some things going on there. Septic tanks. Uh, what was it about cleaning up walnuts at times can become a dirty job. Uh, sure. We have hundreds here in PA, uh, a real uh, tripping hazard. And and at my age, it would be to me. I, 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 f I don't know what it is. I think at this age, I seem to be tripping over everything. The little rocks that stick out in our ground and stuff. <laughs> you name it, I'll find it. <laughs> well, wait until uh, you hit that air. Eden growing system for hydroponics. 
Um, huh. I'm kind of downsizing on the hydroponics only because it's too successful. <laughs> it's, just, yeah. it's like, it's just like, what am I going to do with all this lettuce? What am I going to do with all this Swiss chard? You can only give away so much. <laughs> So I'm actually downsizing a lot of my hydroponics, not because there's anything wrong with it. It's just too good. It's uh, way, If you're just a couple and you're just sharing with friends and stuff, um, you can do that with a conventional garden. But as much food as I produced with hydroponics it was amazing, just amazing, and but way too much. So, And uh, uh, plus it gives me too many chores to do. <laughs> so. Yeah. Uh, here's a, here's something. From Eliza has a Leslie, paper. dirty job creating, managing, turning compost piles. Yep. Yeah. Yes. Yes. <laughs> that can get nasty. Um, yeah, Eliza has a big one. Yeah. Lean twos. A big project is putting out lean, lean, uh, lean, lean, lean must be twos. Lean twos off the hay barn. Uh, one to raise birds uh, under and the other two for the goats. Goats feeding storage area. I have. Oh, oh he doesn't have checker, but he ha But I do have Barbary partridges still. So oh. he'll relate to the partridges because partridges tend to be a colony bird, and they're just entertaining. So he was also yeah. saying checker come, and white and silver too. If you didn't know, that's actually the kind we have here. Is they're white silver and then they're striped on their chest. And I think they have like a red mark towards their nose. Anyway, but just beautiful little bird, but very entertaining. Um, but yeah, I really enjoyed raising them. So that would be probably the one new thing we might do. But only if I get permission from Sherry. <laughs> it's all, if I don't have a Sherry permission, I can't do it. <laughs> but no, it's, I think if, if we decided we had a fun bird, we'd probably do that one. And I'm also thinking about getting an incubator and trying to see if my roosters are actually be successful out there. And then uh, if I get a couple of chicks, I'll just call uh, Amy or, or Debbie and say, you well, want the chicken? Mine came in today. Send over seven <laughs> eggs and we'll tell you if it works. Mine came in today. <laughs> where'd, you get cool. the, where'd, you get, where'd you get the eggs? We haven't gotten the eggs yet. I'm oh. coming over to get them from you. Oh, good, good. So, yeah. We I got it out. <laughs> Sounds good. I, uh, anytime you want to produce chicks, just grab some eggs from us. So we have no problem with that. Um, cool. I thought maybe I'd do a couple, and I thought, oh, maybe I'll see what I can hatch, and then see if I can't sell sell uh, when spring comes. See if anybody yeah. would be interested in buying chicks. I, you know, I can't imagine getting very rich on that. What do you get? Two fifty a chick? A chick? Something like that. So depends on what bird of, they are. Yeah. I've been looking online at the hatcheries, so it depends on what bird they are. Some of them are up to five bucks. Wow. Yeah. The yeah. Olivaker chicks uh, at Coastal, before they, um, you know, run out, they were selling Olivaker chicks for $6.99. It's like, what? Yeah. Um, wow. And they can't, they can't keep them in. So people are buying them here, Rob. Because wow. yeah. I go when I go there to get them, they never have any. Right. Unless you get them the day they come in, they're gone. Yeah. What my worry about that is the people that come in and say, well, I just want hens. And it's like, I know I don't have a lot of practice of how to sex chickens. And so I hate to mess that up. And people I think like, you, just, you would just sell them straight run, especially if you're doing like two fifty, three bucks per day yeah. old chick or a few day old. Just for that price. They're just straight run. I'm reading do. some Take of our notes luck. here. Oh, sounds like Leslie. Leslie, what area are you from? Oh, dear. I had trouble with bird flu. Yeah, that went around a lot of places this last summer. I didn't hear a whole lot about bird flu problems in our area. Uh-uh. I think I think I think my mom told me it was over on the coast area. Hmm. Hmm. Interesting. So, Leslie, if, you, if you're still there, can, uh, what, are, what are you from? Anita, Eugene. Oh, she, oh Oregon. <laughs> She's on the other side of the mountain. Gotcha. <laughs> uh, yeah, I would have known where yeah, I was. Outside is. of Eugene. 
Gotcha. She's over by um, John. So uh, oh. if you have noticed, we got these Ranger Rob hats. John Pearson, <laughs> he was so cute. He was like a little kid. He got his new hat. He took a picture of himself. <laughs> and sent me a picture. He's like, look what came in the mail. <laughs> he was a super That's nice guy. Nice. You probably would have seen him on one of our videos uh, and bought some pigs from us. And he's a proud owner of some Idaho pasture pigs. Um, uh, I would mature right thing. Uh, don't, but don't use them. Uh, but yes, it's a good one. Oh, okay. These are the incubators you're using. So how uh, many? 300 holds 300 eggs. eggs. So uh, back in the day when we did checker professionally and sold them, we used to do the uh, incubators with fi uh, 500 in them. <clears throat> so here's a little piece of. Uh, some people may know this, some may not, but let's say if I went out and grabbed eggs out of my chickens and I put them straight into a refrigerator at 55 degrees, that I could hold on to all those eggs till I have 500 eggs, then load them in an incubator and they'll all hatch on the same day. Wow. I don't know if you know that. I have a question. Yeah. Of course, I'm new at this. Can you use eggs if you wash them and wash that membrane off them to try to hatch them? Or do they have to be right out of the... I'm not sure if you want to do yeah. that. I'm just wondering how this much that curious. protects the chicks. Because, you know, they've got that membrane on there that... Yeah, um, on the outside, but it also has it on the inside, too. Yeah, I, I couldn't no, I don't that. know. Couldn't answer that. Maybe Elijah, maybe Leslie knows, but... So uh, can you incubate an egg that you've washed? Uh, or is it not recommended because it takes a protection away from the chicken side? So um, I don't know about that. I never, like when I did game birds, we never washed the eggs for game birds. Um, but uh, yeah, they just went straight in the incubators. So, but uh, I imagine that we probably had some messy ones and washed them off, but they still hatched. Yeah. But, yeah, we, we only need them. seven of them. <laughs> we don't need 300, Rob. And any <laughs> roosters, you're getting them. <laughs> I don't want any more. I got my two killer ones now. Yeah, but yours are mean. They can be freezer camp. Mine will yeah. be nice. I need, I need a nasty... If, whatever killed my two chickens the other day, I need a nasty rooster in there. So he's uh, he was not quite as nasty as he is now when they get attacked. So I don't know what attacked those... Uh, birds the other day but I, and now that he's in a real nasty feisty mood all the time uh, i kind of like the fact that he's kind of protecting my hands good um so uh, elijah said that they just got over the bird flu and it's cleared up um leslie's trying to hatch 300 birds <laughs> and she said i understand it follows the migratory birds i'm hoping not to have it happen this fall yeah, so yeah i just haven't heard that much about it that problem in Oregon that much, but I know I heard, you know, it could be where are you getting, you know, where the birds came from or how, I don't know. I, I don't know. Enough I think it's that. airborne, isn't it? I think that, that all the birds could bring bird it into the pit. Yeah. So um, I'm not sure. I just heard I it. I'm sure I covered all the things I want. Oh, Amy, do you have any shows coming up? I know not you until the weekend before Thanksgiving. Weekend. So, and where's that I'll one? Probably, it'll Why probably it sleep right that? up on us. But um, it's at the Terrebonne Grange, and it's called Country Christmas. It's hmm. um, quite the to-do. Oh, is it a, a weekend thing or Friday, Saturday? or Friday and Saturday. It's put on by um, Denise at Patchwork Antiques, and she she decorates the entire Grange, and wow. it will be like a giant Christmas boutique that a giant Christmas shop. It's boutique style, and it's going to be pretty great. Cool. And I didn't ask you for uh, we're, we run out of time here, but uh, so what's some of your big future plans for this spring and summer that you're thinking him and Han about, or actually starting to work towards? Hemming and hawing. I I'm not ready to talk about spring yet. Honestly, I'm tired. <sighs> I just so want to survive the cold. If we survive the cold, 
if we survive the cold, yeah. then um, I don't know. I, I know we don't need any more animals around here. That's that's for certain. It's it's one thing to take care of this many animals when it's you know even shorts weather or or yeah. jeans and a sweatshirt. But I'm not made for the cold, y'all. It <laughs> chills me to the bone. So I definitely during the winter I rethink what I got that I have to go out and take care of. Yeah, I, I hear you. And it's and it's been actually mild compared to what it can will get. Here. I know oh, we're yeah. not even into the thick of it yet. Yeah. Yeah, so. but didn't we get snow early this year? I'm November sure. 1st. Yeah, I mean, well, we last used... year it was almost the end of December when we got our first snow. Sure. I'd have to look at us. It, it seems like it came on so fast. It was fast. Yeah, it was almost overnight. It was like last weekend, I think we were in nice sunny weather and cold. <laughs> Yeah, so, and it's like, where did this come from? Because we watched the weather and stuff. We didn't see it. Yeah, somebody stole our fall. <laughs> <laughs> I think the only thing I don't like is the fact that I can't get my plants. Some winter. of my plants wouldn't die. It's like, come on, plants, die already. <laughs> tomatoes were the worst. I was like, make them stop. Oh, hell, yeah. I still got green tomatoes hanging in the greenhouse. <laughs> Same here. I got lots of green, but I shut off the watering system, so they're starting to all droop in there, and it looks pretty sad. I can't. I know most people love to come and see our greenhouse with the Dutch buckets, but you don't want to go in there now because it's like, it's a it's a big dying <laughs> morgue of, of tomato plants now. The tomato morgue. Which, which means, all right, time to pull all that thing, take the clips out, take them out to the compost bin, so all that fun stuff. So, uh, yeah. So, did I cover all the uh, everybody's little grossest things here? How about your list there, Amy? You said you, I know you took notes. Oh, right. Um, what the heck's that? <laughs> what? What the heck's that? <laughs> no, yeah, what are that? Yeah. It's, it's just like you said, Rob. It's like poop, poop, and more poop, you know, just of a different kind. So. I tell you, one thing you wouldn't like over here. Bigger, huh? What people don't see over here is when Sherry mows the lawn, she takes uh, those plastic uh, grocery bags, and she takes a Range Rob poopy bag and just puts it over her hands so she can reuse it. Otherwise, we'd go it through works. thousands, you know, thousands of bags. But we'll fill up one or two of those every time she goes to mow the lawn, and yeah. uh, so, and of course, every poop's an adventure. <laughs> <laughs> What's and in so it? Like, some are a piece of cake. Some of them are mushy. Some of them are going, what did the dogs eat this day? You know, and uh, so, yeah, it's not the funnest yeah. job. And that can get kind of icky. So, night, Jack. And night uh, Jack. yeah, so it's poop, poop, and poop. Uh, but, so we got all of our, our gross stories out. Um, um, <laughs> I should play this right now because it fits. <laughs> Too quiet. <laughs> Which must mean it's time for us to go. So, uh, Alrighty. first of all, you guys, uh, I think next week I may try to bring in another IPP expert. Uh, maybe we really go into it heavy and maybe we'll have Morgan um, uh, get some of his questions and stuff because they would be able to answer like what's over in the East Coast and so and who's available to get IPPs from. And, uh, yeah, so it was nice to have Morgan on the show. Uh, any announcements before I wrap this all up? I don't think so. I don't think uh, so. I think all of us really quick, uh, we all made it to the community thing last week. That was a good thing to do. Can't say that we were influencers, but we at least know what's going on, and it kind of helps. So, anyway, we always advise people try to get involved or at least – stay up to date on things that are happening in your areas and try to go to community things and chamber of commerces and stuff. It's all good. So guys, we're going to wrap it up right here. I want to thank uh, John and Debbie and of course, Amy. And uh, we want to thank your daughter for making those really nice decorations that we got to show earlier. And uh, yeah, and we'll be here next week and hopefully we'll have, I'd like to really do some more follow-ups on the IPP stuff. So we'll see what we can do about getting a guest in here. That's an expert in that area. So and that's it. So, guys, have a great evening, and thanks uh, for being here. Thanks for my to my hosts, 
and we'll see y'all next week. Bye, guys. Good night, everybody. Why do I do that before I'm ready to do that? Okay, let me try this again. <laughs> Bye, on. everybody. <laughs> Thank you very much for watching our video. Please take the time to like, subscribe, and share our videos all over the whole wide world. Thanks.